Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi wa sallamu alaykum wa shaytana rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa l'udwana illa ala al-zalimeen. Wa l'aqibatu lil-muttaqeen. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barak ala abdika wa rasulika Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira. I can't see any of you right now, but I know you're here, alhamdulillah. And it's, uh, it's wonderful to be here. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the incredible work that YM has been doing for decades now, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Many of those who are organizing this whole convention are graduates of YM, and I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow for this generation of YM to go on and to build the next institutions, inshallah ta'ala, and continue the existing ones so that we can continue to spread the message of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadan Rasulullah. Allahumma ameen. I wanted to talk about this concept of focusing on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a means of keeping yourself calibrated, but approach it from a little bit of a different angle. How many of you can think of, let me see if I can see you. All right, I can see you all now. How many of you can think of a righteous friend that just by being in their presence, your iman is elevated, your faith is elevated? Can I see some hands? If there are people in your life, and please do participate because it's an interesting exercise. How many of you have people in your life or people that you know that just being in their presence elevates your iman? All right. So having a righteous friend, يُنْهِدُكَ حَالُهُ وَيَدُلُّكَ عَلَى الطَّرِيقَ As Ibn Atha Allah rahimahullah said, whose very state inspires you or who guides you to the right place is without a doubt one of the strongest ways to maintain your iman especially in a hostile environment. We need to look to those that are oriented towards the same mission that we are oriented towards, especially when the world tells you that that mission is no longer compatible with modernity. They enjoin one another in patience, they enjoin one another in the truth, and they hold each other to patience upon that path of truth. Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala said that if the only surah revealed in the Qur'an was Surah Al-Asr, that would have been enough. Think about that. Just that idea of a group of people that understand urgency and that find other people that are just as dedicated and committed to the truth as they are. And that will hold each other not just accountable, but make one another patient and steadfast upon that truth. Now, the deeper you get into this mission, the more you're going to need people around you that have a certain state that will rub off on you, bi'idnillahi ta'ala, in a positive way. And so if you need people that simply don't commit a certain sin in order to relinquish a certain sin, then that's a standard of friends, a standard of company, that will hold you accountable so that you don't fall to those pitfalls of shaitan. And that's important sometimes, to have people whose standards do not include some of your pitfalls and some of your destructive flaws or make it easier for your vulnerabilities to be exploited. That's one standard. But then another standard is It's actually accompanying people who pray at night. It's actually accompanying people who struggle and strive. It's actually accompanying people who are not simply trying to stay away from certain sins in their lives, but are actually committed to the mission of this deen, the mission of this religion, and that engage in extra forms of worship, in extra forms of service, in extra forms of volunteering, so that they can be amongst those that are most pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's a different level of sabr, a different level of patience that's going to be needed. How many of you have worked with Muslims before? Can you raise your hands? All right, those of you whose hands have been raised, and I don't know why the rest of you have not worked with Muslims before, but I'm just going to, those of you that have raised your hands, uh, nod your heads if working with Muslims is hard. It's pretty hard, right? Okay, requires patience. We require patience with each other, but at the same time, to flip that equation, 
You know, sometimes when you're complaining about the difficulties that come with working with other human beings and some of those hardships, you also talk to other people that felt a certain way as well and that kept you calibrated and coordinated and committed despite that disappointment that you faced. The point is, is that righteous companions and people that are committed just by being in your presence, they elevate your standard. They elevate the way that you are. Now here's the other part of that, they inspire you. And the Prophet Sallallahu one of the things that we learn about him Alayhi Salatu Wasallam is that in the last year of his life, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doubled the review of the Qur'an, or rather Jibreel Alayhi Salaam reviewed the Qur'an with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam twice in the last Ramadan. And the famous hadith about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the Prophet ﷺ was always generous. He was always committed to his mission ﷺ in a way that inspired generosity. But when Jibreel ﷺ met him, Hina yalqahu Jibreel, when Jibreel met him, the Prophet ﷺ would go into that next gear. And Imam al Nawi, rahimahullah, he says one of the reasons for that is the presence of righteous companions. That when Jibreel was with the Prophet it increased the Prophet even further. It took him to the next level. Now if you lived in Medina, when you were with the Prophet you were so inspired that you had no concern for this dunya. I mean, you think about subhanAllah how beautiful this is. That the companions describe themselves with the Prophet like every concern left, every priority was reprioritized in accordance with wanting to be in the presence of our Prophet ﷺ. Whether you were young or you were old, whether you were just making it as a Muslim, or you were a companion that was dedicated to the mission of the Prophet ﷺ, when we were with the Prophet ﷺ, لا يهمنا الدنيا. The dunya did not bother us at all. This world did not provoke any sense of concern for us. They were like people, as the Prophet ﷺ said, if you were to be the way that you are with me at all times, the angels would shake your hands in the streets. But we don't have the Prophet ﷺ amongst us anymore. And alhamdulillah, we still have each other and that's important and that's why we have to stay together. People that remind us of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have to maintain a part of our lives. Otherwise, if you are living your Islam alone or just on some quarter of social media, you're not going to have a collective that boosts your faith and takes it to the next level. In fact, it could be detrimental to your faith. Even if this, the discussion is Islam, there isn't the level of inspiration and holding you accountable and inspiring you to the next level that would be present in a circle of righteous friends. Now here's the thing, what I wanted to pivot to is this idea of Allah taking you as a friend and you having Allah as a friend at all times. And you ask Allah to be your friend when you say, وَتَوَلَّنِي فِي مَنْ تَوَلَّيْتِ Oh Allah, be my wali. Oh Allah, be my guardian. Oh Allah, be my best friend. Oh Allah, be my protective friend. You're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that in your dua. And I want you to think about everything we talk about when we talk about healthy presence of friends and righteous company and what that does to, you insp to inspire you. And think about what it means to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what that does for your faith. In the sense of being so cognizant of His sight and His presence at all times, that your faith is directly connected to Him and what that means for you on a consistent basis. You remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are aware of His sight upon you and so you don't transgress in certain ways because you're thinking about His sight upon you, not just the sight of righteous people who were meant to, at the end of the day, connect you to Him, not being there. Right? So the righteous friends, at some point, they're going to go home and you're going to go home. But those righteous friends serve the function of reminding you of who? Of Allah. So that 
you would continue to be reminded of him even when they departed from you. And that was, of course, the biggest test for the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. That the person who served as the ultimate reminder of Allah, the Messenger of Allah ﷺ himself passed away. And so now they had to try to generate that consistent awareness and reminder without Rasulullah ﷺ in their midst. So the, the function of righteous friends is that they remind you of Allah in a way that you continue to be reminded of Allah even when they depart from you. And you think about that even in the sense of the hereafter. When the Prophet ﷺ says, Anta ma'man ahbabt, you will be with the one that you love. That doesn't just mean if you love the Prophet ﷺ, you'll be with the Prophet ﷺ. That means if you love Allah, you'll be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you show up on the Day of Judgment, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all to have an easy accountability on that day. And you already know Allah before He calls you to Him. You already have invested in nurturing a relationship with Him. And it's different. But at the end of the day, that has to come back to your own du'a, that has to come back to your own worship, your own supplication, your own willingness to at least try to hold yourself accountable when no one else is around. To try to abide by his standards even if everybody else has forsaken those standards. Even if people make you feel a certain way for having those standards. Even if people insult you, even if people consider you to be a certain way, it doesn't matter because you're operating on the set of his standards, not theirs and not even your own. Now it's a process for Allah to become your friend. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala become our friends. Everyone say, Ameen. May Allah make us all amongst His friends. Tawallani fi man tawallayt. Oh Allah, take me as a friend amongst your friends. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, unlike us, right? We can only have, you know, one friend, two friends, three. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who hears the dua of every single person when they say Allahumma, no matter what language they're speaking, no matter where they are, no matter how many people are saying it at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala invites you to friendship. And there is no limit to the number of friends that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can have. Tawallani fi man tawallayt. There's a process here. Now this process of Allah being al-wali, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being your guardian. And I want you to think about the connotations of this word. This process requires first and foremost the entrance into a state of belief. I know some of you might think like, belief, iman, we all have iman. We all have iman. And SubhanAllah, Ustad Aisha and I were just talking backstage about this concept of how quickly people can endanger their iman without even realizing they're endangering their iman by making statements, by saying things that are completely out of the bounds of Islam that violate everything of the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, but it flows and it's... How is it that it becomes okay for them to say it? Because they look around and other people are saying it too. فَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُ مُسْلِمُونَ Don't die except as Muslims. Careful. Right? So entering into a state of Iman and being very deliberate that you accept the conditions of faith. And there are articles of faith and there are conditions of faith. Allahu waliyu الَّذِينَ amanu. Allah is the friend of those who believe. He takes them from darkness to light. Darkness is the darkness of disbelief. Light is the light of faith. And once you enter into a state of faith, you commit to La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah just as a commitment that if something is proven to me to be of faith, I accept it. You enter into a level of friendship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a level of His guardianship. But then you want to grow and you want it to be a deeper state of friendship. And what takes you from level one to level two? You know, it's very interesting about this ayah. This ayah was revealed in Medina. And it's when the Muslims came into, into communication with many of the people of the book. And Mujahid rahimullah says in the tafsir of this verse that يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُورِ takes them from darkness to light refers to people who already believed in Isa alayhi salam, they believed in Musa alayhi salam, they believed in Isa alayhi salam, they believed in Moses, they believed in Jesus, peace be upon them. 
And they were looking for the light of the continuation of their message, and it was too dark to be found in those days. And that is indeed the case before the Prophet ﷺ comes, is that you have a group of sincere people that are looking around for truth. Those people that Salman al-Farisi came into contact with around the world, sincere people of the book that were looking for the next phase, that had realized that the candle of Isa السلام, the torch of Isa السلام, of Jesus peace be upon him had been dropped. And they were looking for it. So Mujahid rahimahullah says, يُخْرِجُهُ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى nur takes them from darkness to light by taking them from their belief in Isa alayhi salam as they were striving for the next phase to the light of the belief in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Believing in the message of Musa alayhi salam was light. Believing in the message of Isa alayhi salam was light. And they were looking for the continuation of that light of tawheed, that light of monotheism. And Allah guided them to where they found it in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam's message. So he took them from darkness to light, but there was an effort on their part. Think about how hard it was for people to be willing to consider that next phase, to be willing to consider that next branch of belief. So they had to strive. There is a level of exploration there, a level of commitment that's necessary for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open your heart to that next level, to where you go into a deeper level of friendship with him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that those who believed in Isa alayhi salam and then believed in me have twice the reward. Which is a glad tidings to all of those that converted to Islam in here. That you have twice the reward. They believed in Isa alayhi salam and then the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam came and they believed in me as well. They have twice the reward. They built upon that friendship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah brought them to another level of closeness through their commitment to looking for the light and open their hearts in a certain way. That's one way. The next thing I want you to think about here though is that that next layer of focus and when I ask you who the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is you probably think of a particular prophet. I hope you do at least. After the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which person is referred to as the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the friend of God. Ibrahim alayhi salam. Someone said that really loud, mashallah, and I hope your name is Ibrahim. Because that's, that means that you love your name. Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim is the friend of Allah. And if you think about the nature of that friendship, the nature of that relationship that Ibrahim alayhi salam has with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what brings him from step one to step two to step three, was Ibrahim's willingness to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah praises many things about Ibrahim alayhi salam. But the condition of his closeness to Allah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly connects to closeness, was Ibrahim alayhi salam's willingness to submit himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if he didn't immediately understand the command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he submitted himself because he trusted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is al-wakil. He's the one that you place your trust in. Allah is al-hafil. He's the one that protects you. Allah is al-mu'min. He's the one who guarantees you safety. Allah is al-wali. He is your friend, your guardian. But your friendship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not one in which is equivalent to a human friendship where there are somewhat equal rights and responsibilities between friends. That friendship flourishes when you give each other an equal measure of the same type of content, of the same type of substance. That friendship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a friendship with al-wali, is a friendship with your guardian, a friendship with your protective friend, where you submit yourself to Allah and Allah rewards that submission by letting you feel tranquility that that submission was the best thing you ever did with your life. Why do people take a step back and, and not take that next level of commitment to Allah? Because subconsciously, it might be playing in your head like, if I take that step, here's what I'm going to be missing out on. Here's what I'm going to be missing out on. Whether it's an immediate form of joy, 
or it's a convenience, a comfort that you, are, that, that you have. There is a fear that we have, an apprehension, and it's, of course is generated by the shaitan as well, who wants to distance us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as possible, that if I take that next step of submission, it's going to yield me sadness. Why? Because I'm giving up something. I am putting myself in a certain level of restriction that is not going to allow me access to things that I think bring me happiness. And so especially for young people, let me put off this level of submission, this next commitment, because this right now is what gives me a sense of happiness and fulfillment. And the way that Al-Wali rewards your submission is that as soon as you submit, even if you incur hardships in the process of that next level of commitment, Allah unlocks a tranquility in your heart that you can't really describe to somebody that's never experienced it before. It's really hard to tell someone what that next layer of faith felt like. But every time Ibrahim السلام, submitted himself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, despite something extremely difficult in front of him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately showed Ibrahim السلام, that it was worth it. Ibrahim was at peace with that submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He came to trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know that every single time he submits, إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلَمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Every time his Lord tells him submit, he says, I submit myself to the Lord of the worlds. Allah is going to give him something special in return. Allah is going to reward that sacrifice. And so when you think about your friendship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a lot of people are like, you know, I, I feel very close to Allah. Why? I make a lot of dua to Allah. It's great. Alhamdulillah. Keep making dua to Allah. Sincere dua is a form of submission. Sincere dua is a form of submission, by the way, because you're submitting your ego by admitting your own incapability, by calling upon the all-capable. You're admitting your own inability to the one who is always able. You are submitting yourself in terms of your time, in terms of your own efforts, and exerting yourself in dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is ibadah. It is at the core and essence of worship. But that's sincere dua. It's not just I call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when I'm in trouble and ask Him to do stuff for me. It's not just I call upon Allah when I'm broken and ask Him to fix me. It is dua that transpires within the capacity of a holistic form of ubudiyah, a holistic form of submission. Ya Allah, I submit to you. You think about what a wali means in terms of a marriage, right? A guardian who is going to act on my behalf, who understands, who has my best interests at heart. When a person has a wakil, an agent on their behalf, someone that acts on their behalf, there's a submission that is implied in there. And Allah, al wakil and al wali is different from a wali and a wakil in the human sense. It's so much more intense in terms of that submission. But Ya Allah, I'm submitting it to you. I'm going to focus on pleasing you. I'm going to focus on submitting myself to you. And I'm going to submit my understanding of outcome, my understanding of fulfillment, my understanding of what I think brings me joy right now, because I know that you know me better because you created me. You know me better than I know myself. I slumped. I'm focused. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unlocks something within you. يُخْرِجُهُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النور. He takes them from darkness to light. And not everyone has the same amount of light. There are lights that are a little dim. There's someone that, you know, is barely hanging on to belief. Barely hanging on to La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. But the light is still there in their lives. And what I would say to you, dear brothers and sisters, that if you feel like the light is about to turn off altogether, if you feel like it has dimmed to a point that it's barely there, then you need to commit the time and the effort to increasing and amplifying that light before you find yourself in complete darkness. That's a warning sign to you. 
and nothing else should be your priority in that moment except increasing the wattage and making sure that that light gets brighter and more clarifying for you. If you find that it has dimmed itself to a point that you barely even recognize where it is at this point. But just like on the Day of Judgment, some people have a little bit of light here, and some people have a bunch of light that's emanating from their bodies. In this light, the light of Iman, the light of faith, which is directly correlated to your friendship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is not the same for everybody. That light in your heart that allows you to see the world in a certain way, in context, that allows you to see everything through the lens of trying to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a special light that you want to have. And that's increased through your willingness to submit. Your willingness to commit. See, a lot of people treat religiosity backwards. They treat this relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala backwards. They say, I'm going to wait until faith makes me feel amazing to take the next step within it. I'm going to wait until I have this incredible moment where one day I'm just reading Quran and I break down into tears. And then I'm going to take that next step. Then I'll commit further. But the reality is it doesn't work that way. First you strive, then Allah unlocks. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while He invites you, every single one of us, to close friendship with Him, Allah doesn't need any one of us to be His friends. We need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Antum al fuqara ila Allah. You are the ones who need Him. Wallahu al ghaniul hamid. Allah is self sufficient and Allah is praiseworthy whether you praise Him or not. Always praised. So you have to see in yourself that if I take that next step, I know that Al Wali will allow me to come closer to Him. And Atani Yamshi, Ataytu Harwala. You go to Him walking, He comes to you running. You go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unlocks something for you in the next way. Now I want to end with this concept because it's a very powerful concept. Because I want to go back to the very start of this. And it's extremely pertinent especially to young people right now and we have the epidemic of you know, just sadness, emptiness that is so evident around us. One of the ways that you look at the people of Allah is that they are a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, we started off with those people that inspire you just by being in their presence because they clearly have something that you want. They clearly have one layer of connection to Allah that you feel like you don't have. Maybe it's not always entirely vertical, right? Sometimes you're connected to Allah in one way. They're connected to Allah in another way. And what made the companions beautiful is that they looked where they lacked and then they tried to find people around them that would help them fill those gaps within themselves. I want what you have because what you have is a greater level of connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah says, اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ Guide us to the straight path, the path of those who have earned your favor. When we say, تَوَلَّنِي فِي مَنْ تَوَلَّيْتِ Take me as a friend amongst your friends. There's a recognition that in every generation and even in our immediate context, we can identify people in our past and in our present who are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that inspires those around them. And if you take a person who practices this deen as it, needs, as it deserves to be practiced and put them in a room with someone who has no clarity in their theology, doesn't know who God is, doesn't know why they're here. And you tell me if it's not self-evident that with, the equal, with, with completely equal circumstances, they will be in completely different states. How is that not a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's light upon a people? Yesterday, we were with Shaykh Yasir Fahmi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure his mother. May Allah azza wa jal descend his mercy and his healing upon her as they received devastating news uh, yesterday. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descend his tranquility and mercy upon that entire family. Allahumma ameen. He was talking about, you know, the idea that, look, I know we're down on our ummah. Sometimes we get really down on the Muslims. The Muslims are this, the Muslims are that. But there are some pretty amazing people in this ummah. I feel like everywhere I go, I meet people who are a sign of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
There is no way you could tell me, just basic experience, that the person who commits themselves and the person who embodies and manifests faith in the way that it should be manifested. I'm not talking about people in your life that practice external aspects of faith but have filthy tongues and are abusive and condescending. Because the Prophet ﷺ said about that woman in his time that used to pray a lot and fast a lot but was abusive to her neighbors, لا خير فيها. There is no good inside of her. There is no light in her. There is no faith in her. That's not what it is. Clearly, there is something lacking on the inside if they're manifesting that on the outside. They're not doing it right. But if you know people in your life that took that next step to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and put them in a room with someone who has the exact same set of circumstances and tell me you don't see the difference. And so what's the evidence for you that if I take that next step in submission to Allah and focus on Allah that Allah is going to unlock another layer of friendship for me? Look at those people who have done what you have hesitated to do. And tell me you don't see a difference. The signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are around us all the time. And by the way, they're not always going to be on the stage. And in fact, I can tell you that if you're looking at the stage for them, you're looking in the wrong places. They might be sitting right next to you. They might be the people that are volunteering in this convention. They might be the people that are trying to whisk speakers through the crowds. They might be the people that are cleaning up the convention center. They might be the organizers that you don't even know. They could be the people wearing the vests or the people sitting in the seats that aren't saying a single word. The people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exist amongst us. Pay attention to those people. Those people that hold their tongues back from the dignity and honor of others. Those people that c continue to be in the masajid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those people that quietly work to enact change in their communities. Those are people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you tell me when you look at their faces and you see them that you don't see a level of fulfillment that cannot be given through anything else to anyone else. Allahu waliyu alladheena amanu. What did the Prophet sallallahu say in that hadith Qudsi? Man adali waliya. Allah says, Man adali waliya faqad adantuhu bil harb. How amazing is it to have Allah as your friend? You know, when you think about your friend, one of the biggest tests of friendship is will your friend have your back when you're not there, right? Are you going to have my back or not when people start talking about me? Are you going to defend me? Are you going to be there for me in my moments? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man adali waliya, whoever messes with one of my friends, I will wage war on your behalf. Allah will wage war on our behalf if we enter into that friendship with Him. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that no one comes close to me with anything more so than the things that I've prescribed upon them. They submit themselves to the obligatory deeds. I'm sorry, if you're not praying five times a day, don't claim friendship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Work on it. And I don't say that to be harsh, and I don't say that to condemn people to doom altogether if they're struggling with their salawat. I'm saying that you're not going to come closer to Allah with anything more so than praying your five prayers on time. And fasting your fast, and doing the things that He commands you to do. And abstaining from the haram. And then you start coming close to Allah with the voluntary things. Until I love you. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you. Now again, we said there's a general love, there's a general wilaya, a general friendship for the believers. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, that overwhelms your entire sense of seeing, your entire sense of hearing, where you go, what you exert yourself towards, what causes you concern, what gives you happiness. Everything about you is now shaped within that love. Everything about you is now shaped within that light. And the last thing I'll share, because I'm out of time, right? <laughs> I see you holding the phone uh, nervously. The last thing that I'll share here is you know what's incredible, subhanAllah, is that as much as it's a process, subhanahu wa ta'ala, glory be to the one who turns hearts in an instant. Glory be to the one who closes gaps and distances of years and years and years in a matter of days 
in a matter of moments. There are people that go from being enemies of Allah to being friends of Allah in one day. You're dealing with muqallib al qulub the one who turns hearts. And so for those of you that are sitting there and going, this guy is talking about friendship with Allah and I'm struggling with belief in Allah. I'm struggling with major sins. How is that even possible? It is possible that you go home tonight as a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah is the one who shortens those gaps. And Allah is the one who closes those distances in an instant. But that is through your sincerity. To want to be Allah's friend. To want Allah to be your wali. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us all as friends. May Allah direct our focus and our longing towards Him. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a faith that allows us to bear the tribulations of this world without compromising our religion in the least. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our hearts to be connected to Him and our hearts and our efforts to be connected to each other in accordance with seeking His pleasure. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khayra. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.